houses don't match the no lot numbers. If you want to get into it, the whole town is all messed up. And the town comes along and puts Amber Road on my driveway. And I live on Havel Street. So figure that one out. Listen, don't make it any more complicated than it already is. No, I don't think we're trying to make it more complicated. We just want to have, make sure that every parcel for which the name of the street is going to change is proper, properly identified for purposes of registry of deeds. I mean, if I were on Adams Street, I know I'd want to make sure whatever gets filed the registry of deeds is the proper information because I don't want to have a problem down the road. Have you tried to do something to correct that? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Well, I, think well, I, I don't know. I, I don't my know. question would be is that if, you know, this seems to be a way to make it a little bit easier, if it isn't already matching up, then this is going to correct that. And I'm just not quite sure if you're looking for information I that matches up to make sure that you've got the right parcels and the right owners. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get that because all of the, the legal documentation that I have, it might not be. I think you need to. You I think you need to go from your deed reference. You need a copy of your deed. That's so the most reliable so information the that you have. That's like the lemur and say, "Oh, go ahead, go forward." <coughs> because the deed reference is obviously what's in the registry of deeds. You know, whatever's on the assessor's map is maybe something different. But it's the, uh, I would rather have something that works off of whatever is in the registry of deeds office and move it forward from there. At least then, when people go to sell their home, subdivide, further develop, they've got a, a better point of reference which has now been referenced the second time with the, with the name change of the street and tying it to the registry of deeds. But, you know, you've got a map, map and parcel, which you just said doesn't match up to your, to your deeds. So I'm even a little more concerned about saying, yeah, from here to here, it sounds right. to me. Um, well, let, let, yeah, we're going around and around. I don't want to make a federal case out of it, but I just want to make sure. I don't want to put people in a worse position. You get the deeds. <coughs> you get the reference to the deeds. Is that sufficient? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that it's sufficient. I, I, need, to, I need to have it. From the starting point, the Barretta, is that right? Barret. Barret, so that property. So wherever you're going with, with your with your dogwood, and anybody that touches it. We're yeah. never going to have a dogwood address. Right now, some of it appears to be <coughs> onto the other. There's map. nobody up there but me. Well, there are other property owners. No, no. there's nobody else up there but me. All the property owners are on that map, mm -hmm. except for me, which is Beyond that, which is already gone. Well, I, Dan, I've heard two different things out of you, though, about it being already dogwood, but also still being Adams Street. I, I'm not clear. I think the chair asked you that question, too. Is it still dog, it, it, is it dogwood lane? You have development up there? Yes. What's it known as? Dogwood lane or Adams Street? The development is known as dogwood lane. Okay. It's registered as Dogwood Lane now. Dana, it's it's no house, longer. Your, parcel, your yeah. house is where Adam Street goes to your parcel right now. That's where your home is, right? That's my parcel right now. What's your? The development is going to be is Adam Street. Right, including your home. Yes. And that's where the Adam Street ends. Yeah. Access, egress yeah. to the property where your home is. Yeah. And from there on, it's the development. Right. Is your home included in the development or not? No. No. So that's one parcel that is not part of the new development that isn't subject to what the CPC approved. Well, we have to watch that it was subdivided. They originally went out of the process of doing the development, was subdividing the development from, it was all one parcel at, at one time. Okay. Actually, two parcels, it was a small parcel. But, so in order to do the development this way, the CPC, you know, it, it's separate from the home. Name 
change didn't take place, would your home still be Adam Street or Dog? Yeah. Would you? Get there. So now that it's been subdivided <coughs> and approved, your home is still in the 51? It, well, it's still that, but it's, once the... Once no, it still the, is. And if we don't approve this or it doesn't get effectuated... I, my, my number will change. It will. So it will be part of it. It will be something dog would. Yes. From where that map, what I showed you where that is. is. Is that because your home will be facing on the new dog would? Yes. It's a circle. They're going to wind up with another spruce road. Right. I understand that. That's understandable. I think, I think um, Adams comes to your property right now, all right, is now going to be changed to, is going to be or has been changed to Dogwood Lane. Right, it's going to be. Going to, so right now it's still Adams. I think <coughs> that, that's the point. Still Adams, yes. Okay, but, and, and your property is still Adams, so the, the, the road that's going to be there. When it's finally approved by the CPC and the necessary, to the necessary procedure, that loop is going to be Dogwood. Yes. All right, and we're talking about from your property, 51 Adam, 51 Adam okay, in including 51 Adam to the Barrett pro property, yeah. all right, is to be changed to uh, Dogwood as well. So that's the point, that's the beginning and the end of what we're looking, you're looking to accomplish here. All right? Okay. But I was trying to find out, once your loop is completed and your subdivision's in, yeah, once, once your subdivision is in, and that new loop that goes around your, your existing home. There's no home there. I know no. there's no home there. I know, but you've subdivided it, and you've got a layout, a road layout. Right, right. So once the infrastructure is in, right, once that infrastructure is in. Yeah. If, if this petition never came before us. Yeah. Never came before us. Right. Once that loop is in, the dogwood is in. Yeah. Your home, which you currently live in now, what will its address be? Pat, was that part of the plan that was approved that Dana's current existing home would have an address as Dogwood Lane? Mm -hmm. But it, if, I'm, if I may ask, if, if, if it's existing, I thought it doesn't fall under the CPC. The CPC is new construction. This is, a, is a, a, uh, an established structure. I didn't think that that would fall under the CPC. It does? So existing structures fall under the CPC? <coughs> I, I Look, I, I think this is what we do as the chair suggested. We continue it for public hearing, and we need to be provided with every deed to every parcel that you're asking us to change the name from Adam to Dogwood Lane. And that way there, the residents up there who wish to have the name changed, they'll get notice of the public hearing, they can come either say yes this is what I want I want my house to be now Dogwood Lane not Adam Street and we have uh, deeds for every parcel that's affected that's all and then we can make those part of reference part of our motion to be filed right right the registry. yeah and incorporate them to the exhibit as well right right that way everybody's coming so how much time do you need to post a uh, public hearing well how much time do they need to get yeah, we also want some notification up to you about this. Yeah, I understand. Right. To second meeting in February. Second meeting in February. Right. All right. You understand? You might not agree with it, but you understand what we're looking for.
Well, if you want us to take a vote, we can take a vote tonight on the motion as is, and I, I won't vote in favor, Robert. It's the way it is. So, I mean, you can have it one way or the other. I think what we're asking for is not a lot. No, no, no. What, what, we're not. We're not asking for a lot. He asked me what I thought about it. I know. I know. Well, you're coming to us asking us to do something, Mr. Rowe. You're not clear as to what we're looking for. Yeah, and you, you keep changing. I said I will do the best I can to get the information you want. You asked me if I what I thought about. It. You didn't ask me, will you get the information, Danny? You said, do you, what do you think about this? And I told you what I thought about it. You shouldn't have asked me what I thought if you didn't want to know what I thought. Now, you want the deeds. I said I will do the best I can to get the copies of the deeds. I don't know what else you want. We told you what we, want, what we wanted. What else? Copies of the deeds. I said I will try. I'll do the best I can to get them. Okay. Hope you have them all. Uh, yes, Karen. Sorry, I just have a quick question in regard to the um, Mr. Newell had suggested having the um, ones that we had already signed notarized. Is that something that you're going to want as well? Because I just assume provide whatever information you're looking for at the same time so that, you know, we can be clear with how to get it. Again, it's just a question. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you'd want, I'm more than willing to do it. Well, I'm thinking with, if, with we, if we a have a schedule, first of all, if we schedule a real public hearing, all the uh, people affected right. will be uh, given a notice and cer certified notice, right. and which gives them a they notify when to come. I don't think we need yeah. to. Yeah. That's not as long as they sign yeah. that they received yeah. the notice of the public yeah. hearing. You know, <coughs> I meant that the that well, won't no, be no. necessary. Well, this would won't be necessary. It wouldn't be necessary because this would uh, supersede okay. that. They have proper notice. Okay, and moving along, I think we have a representative from Reading Lake here. Mr. Cannon, Mr. Pacino. Nice to see you. Good evening. Good evening. I see a couple of friends that I know I recognize here. Mr. Vino, Mr. O'Leary. Oh, we have friends. We have friends. My name is Phil Pacino. I am the senior member of the uh, Life Commission. I'm also the secretary. I have behind me here is Mr. Cameron. He's a general manager. What we do now? He's a general manager of the Life Department. Uh, first off, it's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting us up. It's always a pleasure to cross the border and come to North Reading and come visit you all. So, and anytime you want us to come visit you, let us know. We'll let this man know. We'll come visit. <laughs> well, I, hope I hope you stop for dinner and get some money in town too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. How's it, how's it exactly. feel to drive on plowed roads? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> That's why I went there. We're, 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 on camera. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about the 20 year agreement. Uh, I am one of the four members who was actually the negotiator and the, uh, one of the original architects of the 20 year agreement. Uh, basically, there were four issues at the time of the 20 year agreement. The first one was the uh, uh, payment to the towns, which is what we refer to as above the line payment was a solution on that. There was a uh, <coughs> discussion about uh, representation, which the 20 year agreement had what they call the city's advisory board. I understand John Wilson would not, not be here tonight, he's a representative from North Reading. Uh, we called, he, he called ahead and said he will not be here tonight. Uh, there was also a discussion about uh, street lightings, and uh, they had basically before my time, the Reading Street lights are at a different rate than the, out, the outside towns. But they're all even at this point in terms of street lighting. And the last one was actually uh, input on major decisions. Uh, the town's uh, concern at the time was uh, basically that they wanted some input in major decisions, basically power contracts got made. And, and that power had been given to the Citizen Advisory Board. Now, I joked when, you know, this was being negotiated, I guess I have to stay around for 20 years, and I actually have been around. Years at this point. I've been around for 23 years and I'm actually running for election again down in Reading. For those who <laughs> <laughs> actually, my brother and my sister in law live up here, so they'll, they'll see this and they'll go, I know that man. <laughs> uh, so that's where we stand. It's been a good agreement. It's lasted 20 years. Uh, it's operated well, I feel, during that period of time. 